All right, guys, Bob McBride, Black Powder TV. We're out here at the range, the uh, heretofore unnamed range. Um, last video, we talked about that. Um, got a couple good suggestions for the range. Um, skunk beard holler, you know, there's some good ones. So keep at it and we'll, we'll come up with something and name this range. But the reason why I didn't make this video last week is I had microphone problems. I ordered new cords uh, for my lavalier mic and uh, it was still sketchy. So I don't know, I don't know what that is, but so I've got a um, camera mounted mic on, hopefully all is good. Um, so by the time I figured out that the mics were acting up again, I had already taken my first four shots um, with the 36 caliber Kibler SMR. So um, 0.350 balls with a 0.020 pillow ticking uh, patch material and 3F uh, Swiss. And we ran through, and that's what this target is, we ran through uh, the 25 grain uh, set of four out at 50 yards. So you see uh, behind this 30 yard uh, board, the stand up target, and we've got the, uh, the secondary camera down there. So you'll get some good shots of that. But we got a three and a half inch group at um, 25 grains not not too great um actually the first two of these i tried to do kind of a in support and and support the rest on my arm but i just can't get comfortable on that table so um so i set up and balanced the front and the rear so we should be able to get a better uh, idea of how these things are grouping but uh, 25 grains three and a half inch piss poor. So now it's time to uh, run a patch. And because uh, I'm want running one patch at the beginning of each set. Just to give us a clean bore. And now we're gonna change this over since you guys didn't get to see the 25 yard because I'm a rank amateur at doing this outside. And this is all real high tech for me too, so. All right, 30 grains. Thirty grains down the hatch. The uh, Pillow ticking material, 0.020, which is um, a thicker pillow ticking. And if you guys don't know what pillow ticking is, um, this is a really old weave for uh, down pillows and feather pillows. So it's a super tight weave designed to be feather proof because you don't want a quill poking you in the cheek or in the neck when you're trying to sleep. So it's a super tight weave and it works really good as a patch material. Now there's other people that use other things, denim. Once you get thicker than 0.020, it's really hard to find a pillow ticking thicker than that. So if you get thicker, uh, thicker patch, maybe a little smaller ball or a tighter combination, uh, you've got to go to something like denim or, or whatever. So, and a lot of people do that and that's great. All right, short start. And cut at the muzzle. Long leg of the short starter to get the ball formed to the rifling. Pushes it down about four inches, gets it down, gets the patch and ball combination formed to the rifling, which is what, what you want. And seat it on the powder. Give it a couple little taps. I don't always do that, but it's a good plan um, to make sure it's all the way seated, but also um, you want to get a consistent seat and have that powder packed consistently because you'll get different velocities with different amount of pack with your ramrod. Uh, and I'll do a video on that showing you guys what that's about, but you can really pack it in and you can see it on the chronograph, the difference. So there's down, half cock. Powder measure. This is a, a new Tim Crosby pewter tip with a little pewter inlay and a plug and a base for filling it. Uh, 
uh, priming horn. Did I say powder measure? Priming horn. And let's get down here. Full cock, set trigger. Let's go take a look. All right, so now we're gonna run through four shots at 30 grains of powder. I like to use these with a the funnel and the cutoff top, because if you got a little heap on there, that'll cut that top off of that and keep you a little tighter on keeping your four shots with the same amount of powder. All right, so got the powder down. Got to keep my head together here. Short leg of the starter. Cut it off. Long leg to engage the rifling. All right, let's get this first shot in. See what we look like at 30 grains. All right, let's go take a look. All right, there's the uh, 30 grains of powder, 0 0.350 ball, 0 0.020 pillow ticking at 50 yards. That's a one and five eighths inch group. I felt myself pull this one here, so I'm not counting that. This is going to probably go into the uh, one of the top groups, and um, I'll get the two top groups with this um, with this set uh, combination, and do a shoot off with them and find the best shooting group of this combination. And that's certainly a pretty good one. One one and three eighths inch group, 50 yards. You know, if I was out here and shot a couple hundred rounds out of this already 
I probably tightened that up and certainly wouldn't have pulled that one, but not bad, not bad, I'll take it. And the way that looked, 30 grains might be the winner with this combination. Because even as I get up to 35, 40 grains, um, it may be just as good, but for a squirrel gun, I wanna choose that lower charge um, because you don't wanna hit that squirrel too hard when he's 30 yards away up in a tree or 25 yards away. Only so much meat on a, uh, on a squirrel, right? All right, so we're going to 35 grains, Swiss 3F. That's your Swiss 3F there. 35 grains. Sharpen your knife. Five grains. All right, opened up a little bit. All right, so here's 35 grains. That's a two, two and an eighth inch group. The flyer up here, I felt that one pull as well. Um, actually, I was, when I pulled the trigger, I was, my front sight was riding high. I knew it when I, when I fired it. So, not bad, still, you know, not, not great. Not a great group. Um, I think this combination's a little loose. So two and an eighth at 35 grains. And one thing I do want to do while we're here is I'm going to redo the 25 grain um, group and, uh, and see if I wasn't just cold on those. And let's go take a look at this 25 grain series. All right. So here's a 25 grain group. That's a two inch group, 50 yards. 25 grains it really didn't loosen up much so 25 grains 2 inch 30 grains 1 and 3 eighths and dead on and um, 35 grains Two and an eighth. So funny how those strung vertically. I think I was, you know, 
not quite right on my front side alignment. Um, by 35 grains, I had pretty much got that dialed in. And the 30 grains is the prettiest one. That's a good, uh, that's a good combination. And uh, one thing about this, this handmade front sight, I was a little concerned about. It's made out of uh, sterling silver, and it's, I think it's um, 20 gauge. So the base, the base is 16 gauge. The blade is 20 gauge, which is super thin, like a 32nd or something. I mean, it's thin, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to see it, or if I was going to. And it's a, uh, it's a long tent, so the front side slopes out, the back side slopes like this. You can peen that and get it to widen out and then file it square. So I wasn't too worried about um, making it a little wider, but I was a little concerned about being able to see it. Got the shades on today. Um, the other day when I was out here and had all that wasted footage from the mic problem, um, I didn't have the shades on and I was shooting about two inches left, similar groups, but two inches left. It was later in the day. Um, so the sunlight was reflecting off of the right side of the front sight and causing me to see that glare as the center of the sight and shift it left and which caused me to shoot more left. So that's a good thing about shades, especially sunny day. Sight shades really kind of shadow those and, and make a silhouette out of your um, front and rear sight versus glaring all over the place. So anyway, that's uh, that's the group for today. That's um, 0 0.350 and 0 0.020. I think what I'll do is um, find some of my jeans. Um, I got a bunch of old jeans. I'll find some maybe 0.024-ish thick denim, but I also have uh, 0.010 patch material and 0.015 patch material. So if I have to use the two of them on top to get 0.025 or so, just get a tighter combination and see if that tightens these groups up. Um, that is probably, um, you know, coming out of winter, not shooting a whole lot, best as I can shoot, I would imagine. Um, I could probably tighten it up. A, I mean, by the end of the year, I could get all of these in, in the dot, in, in the bulls, but um, for a 36 caliber, low charge, I'm pretty happy with that. So. We'll see you next time when we tighten up the uh, patch ball combination and see if we get anything better. And then remember, the video after that or the, the video after that is going to be uh, coning the muzzle of this. Once we dial this thing in, I've shot it enough. We've gotten that perfect load. If I can get a series of four in the bull and then cone it and redo this test and see if I lose any of my... Uh, accuracy with a cone barrel because it would be really nice to do a slow taper cone and be unable to engage the rifling with my stick versus with the uh, short starter. I'm not opposed to using a short starter. I just want to see on this gun if I can get away without it. <clears throat> and plus, I don't know if I told you guys, but I also own a 45 barrel that is um, fit for this gun. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be a 36 or a 45. Same outer profile of the barrel with a 45 makes a lighter gun. This is a little heavy for my wife. She's probably gonna shoot it at the Woods Walks at Friendship at the NMLRA shoots and Friendship, spring and fall shoot. If you're not a member of the NMLRA, you need to go to their website, their Facebook, their YouTube, National Muzzle Loader Rifle Association and um, National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association and check out what they've got to offer. But my wife and I go every year. She's gonna shoot the woods walk with this, probably with the 45 barrel in it. I have got um, two more Southern Rifles on their way that I'll be doing videos of. Both of them, Jack Dupree guns, a brand new, his last gun, which is a 36 caliber Saudi Daisy gun. If you don't know what that is, go on the ALR website, AmericanLongRifle.org and just put in the search bar Saudi or Saudi Daisy and you'll see it's a Saudi Daisy. Saudi Daisy is a, is a pair of towns outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's kind of over there, um, Southeast Tennessee, and they had their own unique styling. And so I got a Saudi rifle coming and I've got another Jack Dupre that he built about 10 years ago, this Southern uh, uh, Appalachian style, Western North Carolina, um, East Tennessee, High East Tennessee. 
um, rifle. So we'll be doing some videos on those. And because one of those is a 36 caliber, this one may very well end up being a 45. Uh, so that's all for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.